Good afternoon. My name is Joshua Vivlutsky. I'm here today with Mallory, Patrick, and Sinting, and we're here to talk about Best Buy. Um, we thank you very much for listening to our, uh, our, our opinion of what's going on with the, with the company, and hopefully you can find some of our suggestions um, useful. What we want to emphasize is that there are no easy answers for Best Buy right now. You know that. You've been struggling with this. Um, so, you know, we do have some suggestions for you, but they're not simple and they're not small. But let's get started. Let's go back to 2004. In 2004, Best Buy was Company of the Year, according to Forbes magazine. The financials were looking great. You see the revenue growing up. You see the net income. Things are looking good. A lot's changed in the last 10 years. You know this, okay? But the industry is still in good shape. Check this out. Since 2006, the only year that's seen a drop in consumer electronics is 2010. There has been growth. But has Best Buy seen that growth? Let's take a look. Revenue has been climbing, but it's slowly starting to trickle off. Check this out. In 2011, we only had a 1.16 or 1.16 increase. In 2012, 0.86% increase. At the same time, I want you to notice SGNA growth. The expenses here in 2009, 20%, and in 2010, 20%. See how that, that's outpacing your revenue growth, 12%, 10%? Obviously, we have a problem here. Uh, it's really affecting the bottom line. What's happening is that as the stores are opening, and Best Buy's opening a lot of stores, as you know, um, the same store comps are going down. Check this out. These are the same store sales. In fiscal year 2009, declined. In fiscal year 2011, 2012, 2013, all declines. So we have this industry growth going on. We know the same store sales are going down. Where is the money going? Where is the revenue going? Well, to our competitors. Online to Amazon.com and Walmart.com. And in the brick and mortar world, we're talking about Walmart and Apple. Why is this happening? Well, let's look at the competitive advantages of each of these companies. Walmart, price. We all know this, right? Amazon.com, same situation. They compete on price. Apple's doing it a little differently, right? They're known for their service. They've got that trendy vibe um, and a unique product line. That helps them out a lot. Best <coughs> Buy has competed for a long time on price, right? That's the idea of the big box warehouse store. That's the idea of grab and go. No frills. You come, you get a low price, you're out, you're done. But Walmart and Amazon are out Best Buy, Best Buy, right? Walmart and Amazon are the ultimate big box stores. They're competing on price better than Best Buy is doing it. How did Best Buy lose this price for? Well, with Walmart, you know, they spent years and years and piles of money building a world-class supply chain that Best Buy just couldn't compete with. Am Amazon, they don't have that overhead of the brick and mortar stores, right? And you have the tax problem. The customers of Amazon aren't actually paying sales tax, and they look at that as part of the price. Now, can Best Buy recapture that price advantage? Can they compete on price? First, we have to look at what the real price difference is. There's a, Invisible Hands is an online program that in real time compares 22,000 different products on BestBuy.com and Amazon.com. And what they found is there's an average 17% price difference. Huge. And take a look at the profit margin of Best Buy, 4.7%. That's going to be a really, really hard gap to close. Now, Best Buy has implemented price matching for the holiday season, but Invisible Hands took a let, uh, look at this, too. And what they said was that if 30% of Best Buy customers take advantage of this, that translates to uh, an earnings per share impact of negative $1.12. That's if only 30% of Best Buy customers use it. 40%, 50% becomes even more of a problem. They believe that this will only generate profit with a 100% increase in sales. So all things being equal, we do not believe that Best Buy can compete on price alone. So what is Hubert Jolie, the new CEO, suggesting? Just a couple of weeks ago, he had an investor call. Mallory's going to talk about that. Thanks, Josh. Okay, so Jolie's current strategy is to increase the declining margin as well as in fix the declining uh, comparable store sales. Now, his plan moving forward is called Renew Blue, according to Joe Lee, and what he's trying to do is cut costs and also improve services. However, these two things are pretty minor considering the price difference of 17%, which was mentioned before by Josh, and, and it's going to be very hard to be competitive in that arena. So also, in addition to that, there is an over-reliance on the service changes, and it's too much. So moving forward, we'd like to look at this also to support that the consumer the customer service surveys taken for multiple retail companies Best Buy was number 11 and which isn't too bad however it shows the customer trends in customer service preferences 
that they're looking for fast, easy, reliable, effi efficient um, service rather than face-to-face -face interaction and knowledgeable, personal services. So that's where Nordstrom comes in as where they're a top-notch company in the past as a customer service company, but now we're looking at Amazon number one without a brick and mortar and, and solely online and what the customer trends and customer services are. So moving forward, looking at what Best Buy should look at, that's important. Renew Blue or revolutionize Blue. We want to revolutionize Blue. We want to revolutionize Best Buy. Looking at revolutionary products and also ex exclusive product lines. That's how Best Buy is going to come to me and that's how they're going to do this. That's how they're going to move forward besides cutting costs and the minor things that are not going to keep them sustainable for a long period of time. So we can't compete. Best Buy is not going to be able to compete on price and, and not going to be able to differentiate on service in the long term. So Patrick's going to continue with more on what we're looking to do. All right, so now the question is, which company can offer Best Buy exclusive products that will actually make a huge difference in, the, in Best Buy's business model long term? And the answer to that is Google. They have a unique product lineup that currently consists of the Nexus uh, phones and tablets and the Chromebooks. And even bigger, in the future, in 2013, they're going to have the Google Glass available to two consumers for a price of $1,500. What Google Glass is, is it's augmented reality, head-mounted display. Um, it displays info it's basically in front of your face when you're wearing the glasses um, in a smartphone-like format. It's hands-free. You activate everything with your voice and operates on Android's operating system. Now, the proposal that Best Buy and Google should uh, pursue is a store within a store concept that finally makes Google competitive with Apple and Microsoft in retail in the retail segment. What they would be called is Google Playgrounds in hundreds of Best Buy retail outlets. Um, and the reason why they're called Playgrounds is because Google's app store is called Google Play, and this is like the physical manifestation, manifestation of that. Now, how would they look? The Playgrounds would be in the center of the stores. Um, they'd be revolutionary compared to this, the tinkering of the stores that are currently being tested by Best Buy and connected stores. And uh, there would be about 6,000 square feet on average, which is um, three, quarters, three quarters the size of the average Apple retail store, which is 8,000 feet. It's going to have an Apple-like layout, sleek, futuristic, and sexy, and it's going to encourage customers to interact with their products. Now, let's take a step back and look. Why did Apple need retail, and why does Google need retail right now? Well, Apple needed to expand their brand, and what they mostly needed was to show users how to use a revolutionary product. For example, 11 years ago, uh, the iPad was a transcendent product. No one knew how to use it. So, and what Apple did was open up their own retail lines to show consumers how to use it. And that, as they see, ever since the retail, they opened the retail stores, they skyrocketed as a company. So we all know that you know Google has a bright future. Um, this Google Glass could well be the next iPhone, the next hot product. So we see what the advantage is to Best Buy. So the tough thing might be you know, convincing Google to do this. We need to make a really good case. And here's the case. They need this retail presence, just like Apple needed the retail presence to make people understand what the iPod was, to get their hands on it, to use it, to sample it for the first time. That's what helped it break out, is that retail presence. And Best Buy can help provide that retail <coughs> presence. Now, why the alliance with Best Buy? Well, it makes matching Apple's penetration affordable. If Google wanted to match, match Apple's footprint on their own, they'd have to spend $2 billion just to open the same type and number of stores. But Google can even overtake Apple using Best Buy. Apple has 395 stores currently. Microsoft is going to have 45 stores by the end of 2013. Best Buy has over 1,000 big box stores in, U in the U.S. alone. Imagine what that could do for Google. Here's the clincher, though. Apple wants to get into China. They currently have seven stores in China. They want a lot more, but they're having difficulty. They have more stores in Pennsylvania than they have in all of China. They're having a difficult time opening new stores due to government policy, but Best Buy owns a Chinese brand, Five Star. They own 204 Five Star branded stores in China, and they're going to have 500 more by 2016. This is a way that Google can get to China in a big way. 700 stores, if they want, in China. So what's in it for Best Buy? Well, this is the simple part, right? Exclusive products. That's going to be part of the deal. That's something that we need from Google, right? That you guys need from Google to make this happen, to make it worthwhile, because that's why people are going to come into the store. And this gives a showrooming advantage, just like Apple has. Yeah, come in, showroom, sample the product. Maybe you don't want to buy it right now. Go home. You're still going to have to buy it at BestBuy.com, because you can't buy it anywhere else. That's the point of this whole deal. Finally, they have the differentiation they need. Differentiation from Walmart, Target, Amazon. They have unique products. 
plus increased foot traffic. Maybe you show up, you want to play with the Google stuff, you realize, hmm, a little bit outside of my price range. But, look, there's this laptop that's a little bit less expensive than the Chromebook that I want to get my hands on. Increased foot traffic can help us a lot, and it makes Best Buy sexy again, which is something we're definitely looking to make happen. And how does it work? So, how much it will cost Best Buy? First of all, Best Buy needs to pay the money for the restructuring costs of the store. And according to our explanation, it would be five million per store. So next, and the Best Buy needs to uh, spend money in training their employees to educate customers about the Google's product. As you can see, Google may prefer to have their own in, in directors to uh, supervise the store's operation to make sure that the customer service provided is high quality. And last, in, uh, in order to attract the Googles and to enter into this strategic alliances, um, the, um, the Best Buy may need to share 50% of the profit with Google. And we think it's reasonable for both Best Buy and Google. And as you can see, in, the, in order to justify our uh, uh, this, the feasibility of this project, we calculate the NPV. Actually, the result of NPV is really, really good. As you can see, only the first year, Best Buy will have a loss of 270 million, and the rest of four years, they will have a positive number. And overall, the NPV will be the positive 4.63 million billion. It is really impressive and a very good number. Next, I will talk to you about the alternative plans. Okay, now, going forward, let's say a deal can't be shut for Google. There are other possibilities out there for Best Buy to get their hands on exclusive products. Examples would be from Samsung, who has uh, a current uh, wide, wide array of tablets and smartphones. Microsoft is looking to expand their presence. They could expand faster than Apple if they were to do so. Instead of only having 45 stores by 2013, they could have hundreds of stores by 2013. And Tesla, who was looking for a retail outlet in order to expand into retail and show consumers what their cars are all about. And now plan C, this is worst case scenario, you can't strike a deal with Google or any other viable option in order to get your hands on exclusive products to differentiate yourself from your competitors. Plan C would be to let Richard Schultz take the company private, as he wants to do. And we, we believe, after calculations, that um, any, any offer over $6 billion would be a fair deal for not only um, for not only the company, but also for its shareholders. Um, if revolutionary change can't be made, sell for anything greater than $6 billion and let Mr. Schultz deal with the, with the turnaround of Best Buy. He wants to radically change the pricing model by slashing prices to compete with Walmart and Amazon. However, that's not viable when you're a public corporation. The shareholders have already said they will not allow that. So, in conclusion, Best Buy can be saved. However, revolutionary actions are necessary, like, like exclusive products with Google. Um, unique products are critical, and a partnership with a high-end brand will make Best Buy a hip destination again. And we believe that you can't just renew blue like Hubert Joey says. You need to revolutionize blue in order to be successful in the future. Thank you. Uh, there's a couple of things going on. First of all, you know, Best Buy is in danger of going out of business, and they know that. Um, and Best Buy, in many ways, is as important to Apple as Apple is to Best Buy. I mean, 13% uh, of, um, of Apple's sales come from the Apple Store, and 13% come from Best Buy. It's a big chunk of change. So we believe that they would allow this to happen. And also, in terms of Best Buy, um, Apple is... Apple is only 6 to 8% of Best Buy's actual sales. So if Apple were to pull out, we think that the... Could, could we possibly come up with an innovative strategy that, that, you know, that might help? Um, possibly. You know, I, I mean, I, I think what we looked at the, when we looked at the landscape, what we basically said was, you know, the name of the game now is price. You know, and unless you can find something, unless you can get people into the store uh, with something other than I have a lower price, then you're in trouble. And so this is the this is that thing. Why is Mr. Schultz is prepared to pay twice as much? Price slashes, and even if you if you assume that maybe you don't need a seventeen percent because there might be 
SGA issues to be aggressive for them. What is he missing that you know? I, I think industry analysts think that he's very bold in making this assessment because A, he's offering double share price and he's having a, a very tough time trying to find investors that support this. So I don't think he can't even find investors to help him raise, raise the funds to do this because I don't think that not only industry, industry analysts but also investors, they don't, they don't believe this plan is going to be viable long term. Well, in terms of what, what he's missing, I mean, he's done this before in terms of um, working with suppliers. I mean, this, this is his history of any time the company's gotten in trouble and <coughs> price wars, um, he has gone to the suppliers and he's been able to negotiate. But he's never been in this scenario before. I mean, I, you know, I think he underestimates the, the degree to which he would have to get the suppliers to give to, to make up that 17% difference. I mean, in the past, he was competing with Circuit City. And Circuit City had all the same issues. You know, and, and before that, he was competing with other small guys, and they all had all the same issues. I mean, you're talking about a totally different business model, um, for which I don't think that just going back to the suppliers and, and asking for better, you know, for, for, for better prices is, is going to fix it. But he has the history, and that's, I think, where he's coming from. Well, then you're, you're accepting the 4.7% profit as in the wood. I mean, can we look at all that SGA saves? Or, or oh, in terms of... And other things he may have in mind? It may not take a 17% move, is what I'm saying. Um, oh, what you're saying in terms of actual making savings? Um, you know, we, we looked at what Jilly proposed, um, and, and unfortunately there was there was a lot of sort of lack of specificity. Um, you know, so were, were we able to find anything else to make the price saves? No, but he also didn't identify anything to make the price saves, which makes me feel like maybe he can't <laughs> figure out how to make the price saves. Uh, there was sort of a list of like, hey, well, you know, it was, it was a very broad list. It was like negotiate with suppliers. It was very, you know, uh, cut costs as much as we can. I mean, there, there, was, there were very few specifics. I understand the time constraints of the presentation it might have been prudent maybe to do a two-part attack. One was a little uh, buy-in and maybe with some cost cut. You have control over that, obviously. In the short term, it's not the hell you slow it down. And then as a deal, then it's hard to add to the yeah. And, and, and we would never argue not to cut costs, you know, and, and one of the conversations that we had many times was, you know, do we include the kind of more conservative things that make sense? Um, and we sort of said, well, you know, that's not going to save the company, so let's talk about what's going to save the company. And, I mean, I think we all sort of assumed that, yeah, you know, cutting SGNA would be great, but if it's not going to save the company, that, that's sort of, as you said, the time constraints. We'll now open it up for questions from the audience. Um, in regards to the current Nexus portfolio, what are the total revenues for Google on those? What are the margins? And if you're splitting the margins 50% with Google as part of the proposed agreement, how quickly can this bring back Best Buy's financial position? I mean, is the time horizon going to be quick enough? to really make this viable. If if this is the only the only product by going forward between Nexus and Chromebooks, then this deal it makes absolutely no sense. What we're basically depending on is the future technology of Food Glass, essentially, because uh, you're right, their Nexus products are are low margins and we'd be splitting the, the margin down. So yet yeah, you're you're absolutely right that it's dependent on disruptive technology in the future. If you're gonna make a gamble on which which companies can make a disruptive technology going into the future is going to be like the next tablet, or the next iPhone. It's going to be either Apple or Google. I mean, some say Microsoft, but most likely not Microsoft. So we're betting on the fact that Google is going to be able to capitalize on future technology like they should. Yes, sir. Um, did you think about the fact that if they only sold their Google products in Best Buy, that they just acquired Motorola recently? and they sell their phones at Verizon, AT&T, everywhere, that they're competing against each other because now they have, you know, they're selling their own products in Best Buy, but then they're selling their actual other product, Motorola, everywhere else, and they're almost competing against each other because the phones, the tablets, that Motorola makes. Well, I think the other alternative would be to not... I think getting into retail would outweigh those costs by far, and being, being able to expand that rapidly in the United States to be able to actually overtake Apple's footprint, and then also do what Apple hasn't been able to do yet and expand into China. I think both of those things outweigh any cost that would be in terms of cannibalization of their Motorola brand. Does that answer the question or not? Yeah, it's just, you know, when you think about it, Motorola cut everything and just started only selling from Best Buy, 
you think, you know, Motorola has the whole Droid thing with Verizon and they wouldn't be able to sell there. They'd have to only sell Best Buy. It's just, you know, something I was thinking about. Well, I guess um, in Microsoft stores, they sell stores with Windows operating systems, but there's also their Windows phones in all their carriers, too. They haven't cut back on that, so they haven't had an issue with it yet. I don't know why it'd be a huge issue with Google going forward. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. No, good. Good, but that um, in terms of the relationship with Google, do you really see that as sustainable? Because if I understand that if Google wants to, if they really want to compete with Apple, eventually they will need a physical presence, they will need a storefront. But from Google's perspective, isn't this kind of just a cheap way for them to test the waters, to kind of test if they need a physical presence, and then if it really takes off, what's going to stop them from saying, we don't want to share margins with you, we're going to pull our product from Best Buy and just open our own stores. I mean, it, preferably the contract would be it, well, as long as possible <laughs> for Best Buy. But yeah, that's absolutely correct. I mean, if Google if Google were to kind of take what they've learned from Best Buy after like five years, if it was a three-year contract, it probably wouldn't be very viable for Best Buy. But if it was at least like maybe seven to